late 60s, when Apollo missions were bound for the moon, that we were first able to see complete pictures of the Earth. Environmentalists began to look at our planet as a single, fragile ecosystem. Now we are intensely studying the thin halo of atmosphere that surrounds and protects Earth. It recycles the air we breathe, regulates climate, and acts as a protective barrier, filtering out much of the sun's harmful radiation. Last year, an international group of scientists proved that ozone, the key element in this filtering process, is being lost at an alarming rate over the South Pole. In fact, a sizable hole develops over this area each winter. Without ozone, the sun's harmful radiation will destroy life on Earth. A group of man-made compounds called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, used as refrigerants, cleaning solvents, and in some plastic foams, are to blame for this environmental problem. They eventually make their way into the atmosphere and destroy ozone. According to Dr. Brian Toon of NASA's Ames Research Center, it is a global-scale environmental problem. This really marks the first time uh, in the history of environmental science where human beings on one side of the planet have done something to the planet that has significantly affected it globally and on, on the far side of the planet from where the original pollution took place. Using the beautiful seaport town of Stavanger, Norway as a base of operations, an international team of scientists assembled this year in an emergency effort to make a detailed study of the North Pole. Most of the work was performed aboard two NASA aircraft. This is the ER-2. For the mission, special wing pods are attached containing atmospheric chemistry analysis equipment and a host of other instruments. Typically, flights are made about 12 miles up, along the fringes of space, right into the layers of atmosphere directly affected by ozone loss. The ER-2's research partner is a modified DC-8. It flies at lower altitudes, but has increased fuel reserves, which allow it to cover more territory, even flights directly over the North Pole. Inside, the DC-8 is actually a complete scientific observatory, loaded with sensing instruments. Scientists perform their experiments and are able to map results right on the spot. This instrument contains four lasers capable of shooting light many miles up into the atmosphere. The light reflects back to the plane and provides scientists with a cross-sectional map of ozone concentrations as well as aerosols, or regions where ozone depletion is capable of occurring. Initial results from both aircraft indicate that high concentrations of CFCs have been found at northern latitudes primed for ozone destruction. When combined with high altitude ice clouds, the right amount of sunlight and confined slow moving masses of air, ozone destruction occurs. As a result of this airborne mission, scientists were able to confirm the process and predict areas of depletion. International policymakers have met in hopes of limiting the amount of CFC production and recently agreed to phase out its use by the year 2000. Many scientists worry that this may not be soon enough. Again, Dr. Toon. With the ozone problem, for example, when you release chlorofluorocarbons to the environment, it's decades to centuries before those are removed. Researching safe economic replacements for CFCs is a vital part of solving this serious environmental issue. Thanks to the intensive work done in the last few years, we know why ozone depletion exists. It is now up to the world community to take responsibility for the future of our global environment. <laughs>